pray that you have been um, keeping well during uh, this season and uh, if you have been facing one challenge or the other we continue to pray with you and for you um, that the Lord will come through for you. We continue with our series just a journey through the book of Philippians and today we are on Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 and we are looking on a subject that has been titled unity and not uniformity. So I'll just read for us the passage and then we will get right to it. Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 and this is what the word of the Lord says. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy. Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Unity and not uniformity. The call to unity is one that the scripture echoes through and through. And I believe we that are believers, and during this particular COVID time, we have come to appreciate the importance of fellowship of believers. We have come to appreciate the coming together and the participating of believers together to worship the Lord together, to be instructed together in the word, to pray together. These things that perhaps we took for granted have now proved to be valuable. But it is not just fellowship that the scriptures calls us to. The scriptures calls us to something more. The scriptures calls us to unity as believers. Psalm 133, the Bible says that how pleasant and good is it for brothers to dwell in unity. Continues to say that it is like the oil that is flowing from Aaron's head on his beard going to the collars and onto, you know, his robes. Says it is like the dew on Mount Hammon falling on the mountains in Zion. And then says, there the Lord, command, the Lord commands a blessing, life forevermore. Paul, here in the passage that we read, verse 2, part A, tells the Philippians, then make my joy complete. That there is something joyous, there is something beautiful, there is something pleasant about unity. Christ Jesus, just before he was arrested, crucified, and resurrected while praying for his disciples. Prays in John chapter 17, verse 20 to 21, and that I pray that they may be one just as you and I are one, so that the world may know that you have sent me. And so quickly, three things that Paul addresses here. The first one is the basis for this unity. It is the why question, why should we be united? And that is found in verse 1 of this passage. And Paul says, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy. Like in many of his letters, Paul first gives you the basis why he appeals to what you are first before he calls you to do anything. And so what Paul is appealing to here are the benefits that have accrued to the believer. Paul is appealing to the position of the believer, the if statement there is not a conditional statement but rather these things you are you have been encouraged in Christ you have received comfort from his love you have participated in the spirit now your hearts have been made new and they are tender and affectionate that is the why question because we have been made new in Christ Paul will call us to unity and then verse 2 is the what question what kind of unity is Paul calling the Philippians and in effect you and I at this moment? Paul is asking of them to be of the same mind, to have the same love, to be in full accord and of one mind. The reason why unity is called for is because diversity occurs. That is why we are talking about unity and not uniformity. 
that we are diverse, we have different personalities, different backgrounds, different ways of looking at things. But the scriptures calls us as believers to be united, to have the same kind of attitude towards the things that God is calling us to. Unity in diversity. No wonder the scripture uses the analogy of the body when it refers to the believers that we are one body and different parts. Yes, the parts are completely different and diverse, but yet they are united in one body, each part supporting the other. But lastly, how are we to be united? And that is found in verse 3 and verse 4. And Paul uses a negative imperative and a positive imperative. First, he says, do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. So he says, don't be selfish, don't be proud, consider others of much value than yourself. Then he says, verse 4, let, let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Paul is saying, don't just consider your interest, but also consider the interest of others. Don't just think you're the only one that is troubled, but also consider others may be troubled. So don't just look to your own affairs, but consider the affairs of others. And if all of us were to do this, if all of us, whenever it is that we come together, but also whenever it is that we thought of our fellow believers, then the kind of unity we will experience is the kind that the world would actually know that Christ Jesus has sent us, and the world will be attracted to this unity and they will come to the saving faith of the Lord. So I urge you, during these COVID times, consider a brother, a sister, one that the Lord has allowed you to have fellowship with. Consider their affairs, consider their interests. Call them up, ask them how they are doing. Foster unity in the church. And when the Lord allows us to be back, I pray that we will pursue unity because there the Lord commands a blessing, life forevermore. The Lord bless you.